Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Well, the topic, the bird right now is hummingbirds, hummingbirds, hummingbirds. Uh, they, the numbers are increasing at people's bird feeders and there's lots of questions about them. Um, and so I thought today we would talk about uh, hummingbirds, especially hummingbird migration because that's what's starting to happen right now. And I want to tell you really the known facts about that as well as some of the misbeliefs about that and we'll so we're going to talk about what's going on right now at your feeders why you're seeing so many of them and that is uh, nesting season has just getting is just getting wrapped up the the babies are, are hatching and, and fledging so normally you'll uh, all summer you've seen an adult male and then occasionally an adult female and even you know the adult males chasing the females at times but then the females of course disappeared for quite a while with the nesting season so they have been incubating well what's happened here lately is that the young were old enough for the, the females to feed longer at feeders uh, a little more self-sufficient uh, and now what's happening is those young birds have, are fledging so at your bird feeders you're seeing adult males, adult females, and juvies. And sometimes, you know, there's three juvies to it from one single nest. Sometimes only a single baby fledges, but two or three. It's been a pretty hot summer, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of the hummingbird nests didn't raise but maybe two babies or even one baby this year. But the, 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 the the big thing is, yes, you're seeing a lot more hummingbird activity right now. And this is the time of year that people will put out an extra hummingbird feeder uh, because in the, sun, in the spring, when they first get here, there's a lot of the mate go, mating going on, or the uh, mate attraction going on, and they're chasing the females around. And uh, so one feeder is usually enough that time of year. But this time of year, when you've got a lot more mouths to feed, uh, having hummingbird feeders spread out, and that, that helps keep those males, especially this time of year, from dominating the feeders. The reason they dominate feeders this time of year is not mate attraction, it's that I've got to head south soon, and I need to put on a bunch of weight. So the hummingbirds are feeding heavily, and they are packing on extra weight. And what's happening as soon as they they put up enough weight, put on enough weight, especially the males, and then we start getting some favorable wind conditions. In other words, we get some cold fronts with, with some northern wind, some wind blowing out of the north. Those males will really start to leave. They'll head their their journey south, and they fly about 100 to 150 miles a night, uh, and, and then land, and then they have they lose almost all that weight they've gained, and they have to build that weight back up. So it's a process for them. So wherever you are in the country, this is pretty much what's going on. Um, uh, and in Kansas City, we always say that peak hummingbird migration is the last week of August to the first week of September. That's when you're getting the most numbers of, in, of our resident birds plus the influx of migrants. So birds much further north leave earlier, of course, and they, have, they get pushed down. And so we'll start getting Iowa's birds and Minnesota's birds and southern Canada's birds start moving through here. But our peak numbers tend to, and migration tend to, like I said, peak is about last week of, of August, first week of September. And I've got customers in this area, uh, right around Kansas City, that have about 100 hummingbirds every fall. Um, and that's why, you know, fall, wait a minute, you just said fall, it's only August, it's not fall yet. But in the bird world, it is fall. This is fall migration, and this is the start of that. Um, and it can be, it's the busy, busy time. So my birds, hummingbirds migrate on their own they cannot fly against a, a hard wind, of course, because they are so light, and they burn a lot of energy. Burn a lot of energy. And here, that leads to my first fiction uh, question that I, want, that I want to address, because I've actually had to go on uh, talk radio shows to answer this question when I was with the Conservation Department, uh, that guys would call in to these uh, talk shows and say, well, my buddy shot a goose that had a hummingbird clinging to his back. So I know that hummingbirds migrate on the backs of geese. Uh, no, that's totally false. Uh, and that's false for a lot of reasons. Uh, and a, a lot of the, one is they don't migrate at the same time. Be, geese have not even started to move from the north-south. They won't start moving for quite a bit longer uh, when it starts to freeze up up there. Hummingbirds are leaving now. So there aren't any hummingbird, uh, geese for the hummingbirds to hitch a ride on, even if that were even remotely possible. Uh, my other question for the guy was, you, uh, you mean the hummingbird wasn't smart enough to let go of the goose as it crashed into the ground? It was still clinging to it uh, when, when he picked it up? Uh, so no, that's, that's been an old tale for years and years. No, 
hummingbirds do not migrate on the backs of any birds. Um, the only thing that is remotely similar to this is that over open water, uh, occasionally migrating birds crossing large bodies of water will land on boats uh, and, and, and for rest. And, and sometimes we get, we have boat uh, assisted uh, birds that turn up in odd places because they were out of energy and they rode a boat uh, somewhere on a boat or ship all the way into port and they end up in a crazy place. So uh, that can happen, though it's rare, but uh, they, that's the only assist that I know that hummingbirds may actually get at some point in time. But they need that energy and they have to land and they have to uh, a, a refuel. As soon as they land in the morning, boy, they start feeding because they are really, really hungry. Now feeding, that's the other uh, fiction that I wanted to dispel and straighten out. Some people think that hummingbirds sip through their long bills like a straw. And that's a natural belief just because the shape of the bill is so long and so straight that you think, oh, okay, that looks like he could just stick his bill in there and, and suck through it like a straw. That is not how hummingbirds drink at all. Hummingbirds lap like a dog. They have a tremendously long tongue. Their tongue is quite a bit longer than their bill. And they can reach way down into flowers. They can reach way down into your hummingbird feeder and lap. And it's fine. It, 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 it's proven finally with the uh, invention of really high-speed cameras that could capture the image and that when the hummingbird's bill gets to its destination, there are tiny little flaps on the ends of their uh, tongue that open up and they bring back with it the sugar water or the nectar from a flower. So the tongue is so long. Now that leads to the question as to where in the heck does a hummingbird store all that tongue if it's longer than its bill? And it's really cool. And then woodpeckers do this too. Woodpeckers have really long tongues. But there's a muscle on that attached to the back of that tongue and to the top of its skull. And whenever that hummingbird's tongue is out and it comes back in, that muscle pulls the tongue up onto the top of the skull, not you know obviously inside the skin, and then back out and back out, back out, back out. Really cool. It's an adaptation for having such a long tongue for its, its feeding style. So that uh, dispels the they sip like a straw through their bills and they ride on the backs of geese and migration doesn't doesn't work that way at all so hummingbirds are fascinating birds they have you know, lots of really cool things about them this is a time to enjoy them make sure you got your feeders out remember four parts water to one part sugar keep it fresh we've been really really hot in Kansas City this year so you really need to be uh, changing out that nectar every couple of days and and remember don't put so much in it if you're having to throw away a bunch you know just put a little bit in it this time you're probably had to put a little bit more because you got more birds feeding and hopefully you're actually seeing several birds at your feeders right now the males are dominating the females are dominating but once they leave which will be you know the first to leave and in the later part of the migration season some this is when you can see four hummingbirds feeding at the same time and those are generally young birds that hatch this year and they don't know the routine yet they don't know to be defensive of the feeders and so they feed cooperatively together so that that, that goes on this time of two year or two so if you're going to put out a second feeder remember if you say it's better to separate your sight lines in other words, if that male or dominant male or female can sit here and chase this feeder and chase this feeder, he will. So it's good to have a good sight barrier, like on one side of a big tree, another side of a big tree, front yard, backyard hummingbird feeders. That way more hummingbirds can feed in your yard at one time. So hummingbirds, fascinating topic, always a great topic for discussion. Send ideas for future programs. If you like the videos, please give them a like, give them a share them with your friends, send out the word. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, come by, let's talk birds.